You may have heard there's a new spec motor from Hobbywing. We're gonna pop it open, hook it up to a tune noiser, check it out, take it apart, put it back together, and see what this new tuning rotor is all about. First things first, if you haven't heard, there are two new spec motors from Hobby Wing. There is a 13.5 and a 17.5. Right now, all I have is the 17.5. They were able to sneak one away to give me to do an unboxing. So we're going to pop this guy open, take a look at the motor, which is, you know, normal stuff. But more importantly, we're going to run out of tunalizer. Wow. There we have it. Ah. Something unique to these new series of motors is you get the test data right from the factory. When the stators are assembled, they check them with uh, an inductance, ohmmeter, whatever you want to call it. There's lots of different names that people give it, but it's checking the resistance between the terminals. And you get your A to B, your B to C, and your A to C readings so you can see the consistency of the motor if you ever have to get it checked later on. Lots of spec guys are going to love that stuff. And it's even serialized. The motor is serialized, as is the test data, so you know that these guys match. Pop this guy out. Take a look inside. The new sensor wires are flat, like everybody needs to run under the battery packs. You get, of course, your best friend in the whole wide world, the instruction manual. So if you do happen to get into your instruction manual, you see this recommended FDR final drive ratio. That's the spur gear divided by the pinion gear multiplied by the transmission ratio of the vehicle as well. That gives you a final drive. And these are very loose starting points for an out of the box tune on the motor, just so you make sure that you're kind of close in the ballpark, if you will, uh, as just like a basic guideline. It may not gonna be the fast setup, but it should be the, fa the safest setup, so to speak. So here we have the motor and this one comes up. There's a protective plastic on here. You wanna remove this kind of before you run the motor for sure. And usually there's a start spot. It's like a piece of, Plastic tape, but if not, it's just some plastic. So usually all you have to do is get under it a little bit and it comes loose. So take that off right away and then you can get that fit and fit. It's just so it doesn't get scuffed up in shipping, but there you have it. That is the all new G4R. Looks very similar to the previous motor, but I assure you uh, there's a lot of things that have changed and we can compare that here. I do have one of the G4, the standard one. This is a 21.5, but they're the same as the, the 17.5. I just didn't happen to have a 17.5 handy. The You see in the front, the collector ring, that that, car, that gold piece right there, much thicker in the G4R for higher, I guess you'd say current pass, all that. And even the tabs up here are a little bit thicker as well. The stator shape, the wires, everything is different inside of this new motor, even though the outside, well, even though the outsides look kind of the same. Uh, you see the big thing that I point out is on those end bells, the secondary machining is different on these guys. There's more chamfer taken off. These are still black inside, whereas only that part's silver. And these guys, it gets machined all the way around after the anodizing to help indicate the update, the, the R version, if you will. Uh, you still have the dual sensor ports, which is nice. You can run a sensor wire off the top or a sensor wire off the back if you need. Handy dandy feature. But uh, you see the chamfering, a little bit different right there as well. Visually, they, they, look, they look great before, so there wasn't much that needed to change there. And then, as far as sizing goes, these are, as, as they've been, it's a roar based motor, so the sizes don't get to change very much. All right, so I've got my motor hooked up correctly. I'm gonna go run the auto test. And there we have it. So I run most of my bench tests at the one volt or the one cell setting. So that's why it says 3.4 volts. It's a hooked up to a 2S battery, but uh, see the current there, 4.24, KV is 3199. M-bell timing shows an average of 43.3. Uh, you see your individual variances on the sensors there. And then if we go to the next screen, we see our total N-bell deviation as well as the rotor symmetry and our hall signal deviation. If you've never used a tunalizer before, N-bell deviation is the average of the the previous three readings that were there. Rotor symmetry is how equally charged the rotor is, and the hall signal deviation is the consistency of the strength of the sensor signals that come in. And then you get, if with a hobby wing motor, you get temperature data because uh, there's a temperature sensor inside the motor. So there you have it. Okay, up next, we're gonna pop this guy apart, do a rotor swap, run it again on a tunalizer to compare what the difference in the tuning rotor is. First and foremost, there is an option tuning rotor. It's a stronger magnetic strength. So it means more torque, less RPM. For some track conditions, say very high bite or very tight 
tracks, this guy's gonna run a little bit better than the standard rotor that has more RPM, less torque, so to speak. So to take these apart, if you've never done so, there's three long screws in the back. I like to loosen them up kind of evenly. And then back them out so that you're not just backing one out all the way right away. And same, this is the same process that can be done for cleaning your motor as well, because you still need to kind of take it apart, put it back together to do a full, I guess, cleaning. Take the front end bell off first. Be wary, the new like Super Teflon washers are in there. These are better than metal washers because they're lighter and smoother. And then I like to uh, then get my rotor tool out. If you don't have one of these, there's a link in the description on how to get one. Rotor tools are great. And if you don't have a rotor tool, I feel like this is a cheat. You can take like um, a, a set of decals, roll it up, uh, make a tube that goes in there inside the motor and kind of use it the same way. So like a business card, something like that works as well. But easy one is you slide it in there and then the rotor can be slid out with it and you got rotor in your hand. Now, sometimes I like to have two of these around. That way, if I am doing some tune, I can set this down and it stays safe in there. It doesn't collect any metal dust or anything like that. Luckily today, the workbench is pretty clean or you can use the box. You throw this in a cardboard box like that and that way stuff doesn't get stuck to it. <clears throat> but to do a like full tear down, you'd pull this guy out, keep the screws on there and you'll notice that the the spacers are all gonna be on this side. We try not to run spacers on the on the sensor board side because we wanna keep it the distance here. Uh, one of the things that's different is all of the end bell pieces are slightly different than the previous generation, including the sensor board itself. One of the changes we made was the spacing of the sensor board in reference to the rotor. That way we're able to keep the rotor right in the perfect magnetic field of the stator, and then we move the sensor board accordingly for what we were going for in all of this. We've talked about that a little bit on the podcast and some of the build up to the release of this motor, but uh, that's the actual piece that we were talking about in that, in that reference, this aluminum part here changed. So there's the bare stator. If you're going to clean that out, the best way to do it is I take a blue towel and I run it down, the, twist it up, run it down the middle to get all the dirt out, blow it off. I try not to use any spray cleaners on these if I don't have to. They do go through an extra cleaning process before they get assembled, so there's usually not any you know, harsh stuff in there right out the back. But over time, you will get mostly dust, and because it's a motor with a magnet, there's going to be like magnetic debris and stuff like that on your in the dirt tracks and things like that. So uh, sometimes you do need to use a little bit of compress there to get that out of there. We'll pop open the new rotor and do the assembly process. Take a look at the rotor up close. Both of the rotors, the standard rotor as well as the tuning rotors, have the fan assembly on the front and it helps generate airflow through the motor. It helps keep more consistent. You get the cooling right on the rotor and the stator of the motor for you know helps with that. Uh, this guy does have a couple extra spacers on here in case you lose yours. Make sure you don't lose that. I'm going to stick these in here for now and just use the same spacer that was in there. Generally speaking, it should be about the same, but just in case there's some extra spacers in there. Take this guy, slide him in here like that. So I've got my tuning rotor ready to go. First thing I'm gonna do is put my end bell back on this guy and I do it with the screws installed. Ah. Slide that guy down, you got your screws in place and then this guy can start to go back in. Now, hold this by the, the pinion part and then go in there because it's gonna wanna suck right in. If you don't, that'll slap, slap right out of there and it kinda defeats the purpose. So you give it a little bit of a twist right there and you'll feel it slide right into the end of the end bell. If you're keeping tension down like this, that all stays in there nicely. Makes the whole process a whole lot easier. Oh, I left one of the shims on there. That's leftover. So there's different thickness shims that it comes with too, so you can really fine tune things. So I'm gonna take that one, stick it on there. And let's just take a look, what did it come with? It came with a couple of shims. There's a thin and a thick in there. And then this guy goes on. Screws are gonna slide behind those areas. You give it a little shimmy like that, and everything keys in. There's little notches that get into place. And then if you wanted to be super pro, the one thing to look out for, see this notch right here? There's a matching notch right there. So I wanna line those guys up just to be extra pro. What did I do? Oh no, that's the notch. There's two notches. And if you line those guys up, that's that's the way they're supposed to go with those notches exposed. So for stator measuring purposes, a little <clears throat> twist and a click. That's not super, there we go. Get that all keyed in. And then when you go to tighten down the screws, like anything that's like a radial tightening, you just snug them up first and then you go back and tighten them down. It's a two millimeter head screw for 
both assembly as well as the, the end bell adjusting with the timing, which is nice. And then what I usually do is I get here, I snug everything up, and then before I crank it down, I like to make sure that there's a little bit of end play. See, we've got a little bit of in and out movement, and then I snug it all the way up, because it'll usually take out a little bit more. Now, when it comes to rotor end play, you don't want to have no end play, but you don't want to have too much either. Like right there, that's a little bit too much for me. Like I would probably want to take this apart and pop another shim on there. So let's go ahead and do that. So when I go to just do a simple shim add, what I'll do is hold this, the center of the stator, hold the end bell on, and then slide the, the front end bell off. Oh, did I not get the last screw? I forgot a screw. It helps if you loosen all three of the screws. And then the end bell slides off. Mind your spacers. Slide those guys back on there. And then that one little thin guy, where'd you go? And it didn't feel like it needed much. So there's, there's different thickness shims that, that were included. So I'm just going to use the thinnest one for now because I feel like that should be... Just about right. But again, I'm going to keep mindful of my little rotor keyways. This guy kind of wants to go on straight. If you line this up, it'll just click right into place like that. And same thing again, I'm just going to snug these up a little bit. Make sure it's not already tight, because if you get to the point where you're snugging it up and there's no end plate, you know you're going to have to go back and take one out. So save yourself the trouble of cranking these guys down. These are little itty bitty screws, so you don't need to go super ham on tightening them. Like RC car tight is what I always tell people. I've seen folks, they grab their wrench like they're putting together a Chevy big block or something. So I've got just a little tiny, tiny bit of play in there. Like you can't, you can't even really see it, but. It's there. There's a little tiny click right there. All right, so let's uh, run this on the tunalizer and have a look at how it changed. All right, so this will be the test with the tuning rotor. And there you go. So it did lose some RPM. Uh, the current went up just slightly, and that's where that torque is going to come from at that low RPM. See our end bell. The timing did change just a little bit, but that's to be expected because the rotor is part of the timing process. Uh, we go down here, we see our deviation at 0 0.8. Our symmetry a little bit better on this rotor, and our signal deviation got a little bit better in, as well. So that's an idea of what the tuning rotor is going to do. And as expected, it's going to lower the RPM. The current's going to go up because that's what kind of torque does. It's a less efficient situation depending on how you're looking at things. So that's an unboxing and look at the G4R, the update to the G4 series of Hobbywing spec motors. Right now there's a 13.5 and a 17.5 available. These were in such high demand, all they could get me was one of the 17.5s for the unboxing. So we're going to have a follow-up video on this, doing the same thing with the 13.5 to look at the tuning rotor option there, uh, tunalizer data and all that. If you do have any questions, comments, or concerns, please do shoot us an email, northamerica at hobbywing.com. If you like podcasts, we also do a podcast. It's called RC Stuff Powered by Hobbywing. We give away Hobbywing Combo each and every episode to find out how to enter to win. All you have to do is listen to an episode. It's called RC Stuff Powered by Hobbywing. Just look it up on your favorite podcast service. And as always, folks, thanks for tuning in to another episode of The Charlie Show, new every Tuesday right here on the Hobbywing official YouTube channel. We'll see you all next time.